If you've seen my review of the Kali Audio INUNFs, UNFs, you know just how sacred desk space is for me. Everything on my desk has a purpose that justifies the space it takes up, because there's simply no room for equipment that doesn't pull its own weight. With that in mind, it should speak volumes that the Nectar CS12 has become the centerpiece of my entire setup. The CS12 is a big deal. It's the best attempt at materializing that long-imagined, almost mythical piece of gear, a device that finally bridges the gap between the digital world and hands-on control. And that's what makes this device so fascinating. The CS12 is so good and so close to this fantasy that its few shortcomings feel far more frustrating than they would on any other piece of gear. Because when a device elevates your workflow to this extent, any imperfection or missing feature seems magnified. Still, these are minor issues compared to the overall leap in freedom and inspiration that Nectar have provided, and I think many of these shortcomings could be fixed in the future with software updates. Full disclosure, Nectar did send me this unit in return for this video, but that's only after I saw what it could do and I reached out to them first. I've been integrating the CS12 into my workflow for the past few months, and only now have I felt ready to talk about it. Now, I've heard other reviewers claim that this is an easy and intuitive unit to use, and I do agree with that to some extent. I think the basic features are easy to understand, but to get the most out of it, I think it really requires a lot of patience, practice, and research. But as far as the basic features, I think the best way to understand just how exciting this unit is, is to see another Logic user experience it for the first time. We all want to stop using our mice and keyboards and stop looking at screens and-, and Absolutely, just, just have the buttons. <laughs> yeah, so, so you saw the transport controls right away. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, basic stuff, you know, that's oh, nice. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, also, uh, jog wheel like this. Oh yeah. Super useful. Uh, zoom, uh, like shift, you can zoom like this. That's like the least, least exciting part to me. Say you have marker one and two, like I have here. When you hold down the markers button, these map to all your oh, markers. Oh, that's so you nice. Can just, boom, you're right at the verse. Yeah. Boom. You're right at the course. And then you could just punch people in there. Oh, that's really nice. That's why I want to start using markers more. I'm like, if, it's, if they make it that easy. Here's the fun part. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> what the fuck? Base down. That's really nice. That alone Holy makes shit, it super really, worth it for really me. nice. Then there's automation. This thing does automation so, so well. Really? So you hit automation and I have it set to latch, but if you hold here, I can go to any of the, the other automation modes. So say, I want to start recording something. That's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, but one thing that I'm sure you've dealt with is this mess, right? Yes. Like, like obviously the move I'm making is simpler and doesn't need this level of resolution. They've added this thing called single point oh, automation. Oh, that's this nice. This is a touch sensitive fader. So it's not just based off of when you move it. It literally knows when your finger is touching it. What the? Yeah, so if, I, if I'm in this automation mode right now and I turn that on and I start moving, look, when I touch it, it makes a point. I move it, I let go. Simple, clean automation. Oh, <laughs> dude, that's beautiful. Isn't that amazing? Instead of either clicking them in by hand or having like the million little points. Exactly. That's so nice. This is the first uh, piece of gear that I've seen like implement this. That's incredible. One, one caveat is it's a uh, Logic and Cubase only. So we we Okay, that. we're fine. Yeah, 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 that yeah. doesn't matter for me. <laughs> I preloaded some plugins. It's a little bright right now, so you can't see it. It works better in, in the nighttime. For every single plugin in my channel strip here, it oh, lights up. Sick. I can click on the second one, which is the tape plugin. It's open. Oh, oh dude. Does and it give you the these... full? Yes, it does. Oh my God, that's so sick. So you can see I have a Fairchild plugin here. Shift, I'm gonna turn that on. Go to that one, boom. Oh, that's so nice. Every single plugin that, has it's its already mapped. Mapping. And look, they're color coded. Oh. And not only that, I set this up the way I wanted. I oh. customized it. I get to choose the colors of every knob and what each one controls. Dude, wait, so did you map all these yourself or did it auto map? Them? It comes auto mapped with like so many like popular plugins, but I, then I chose to customize them because you know, yeah. they, they give you every single control and I don't use every single control yeah. in, in a plugin. So that's this, incredible. I map this to, into a way that's intuitive to me. Take a plugin like, uh, honestly, like this one where you have your input gain, your threshold, and you might need to like adjust them at the same time. You can do that. You can't do that with a fucking mouse. So see, they mapped this in a weird way because the pull tech is a confusing uh, EQ. Like this is the low band. This is the mid band and these two are the high. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because that's confusing, look, I made them slightly different colors. So these three are these three. Oh, that's... These three are, are different colors. Take this one by uh, by Softube. Beautiful looking plugin, but there's a lot of controls here. There's more than the 12. Yeah. 
uh, it comes preset. So EQ gets its own oh. section, and I can go to dynamics, and then this is now its own section. Oh, but it gives you the whole fucking readout there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's Angel, amazing. Angel, you can you don't have to look at the screen anymore. Say you want extra level of control over any any parameter. If you push this button right here, the select button, touch any control. That's amazing. It's now mapped to this. Comment that you want to like do a, a filter yeah. sweep, right? I can select the filter here. <laughs> And now, also, like, if, if you let go... <laughs> uh, sends. Boom. All... Oh, however many sends so you want. Nice. One thing I fucking hate about Logic, that this thing remedies. For some reason, they're like, bus one, do you want it to, for your fucking reverb? Like, no, call, I, it's called reverb, call it reverb, please. This one, look, delay one. Boom, right here. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> right? Dude, the screen is just so helpful. And... Channel. Have you, have you ever fucked around with smart controls? It's another programmable thing. If you set okay. it up in the right way, um, you can make these presets. So I hate doing my automation with this because then I can't change it later. Me too. So I make gain automation. This is plus or minus 10 dB and I automate this. So I can always just grab this. Oh. You, can, you can control that too. And that is controlling this plugin over here. That's so awesome. From here. And not only that, I, I programmed this specifically. To have my low and high pass filters. Oh, that's filters. sick. I programmed it also to, to turn off when it reaches. You see that it, yeah, it just turns off when it. Yep. Because otherwise it would still be doing something. Yeah. This thing is buggy though. Let me show you something that's uh, buggy about it. This parameter is locked to this parameter, right? So say I, I put it all the way at the top and then I move it all the way down here and I want to move it just a little bit up. Snap you back to. Yep. Yep. And all I'm sure things. they also didn't have enough of a input. Yeah. You know, because that's yeah. a very specific thing. You're going and you're changing something on your computer. Of course computer. you can miss that. Right? 100% <laughs> yeah. super easily. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, hopefully they're, they're going to listen to their customers yeah. is, is, my, is my hope and that, and that this is going to be something that continues to grow. These are all my problems. You know, yeah. clearly I, I have my, my thoughts on what could be better. And some things aren't even problems. They're just like, this platform is so open and so ready to be anything you want. That's like, oh, you know, it gets me thinking like, you know what else would be cool? Yeah. Like... It's just oh, like a really nice. exciting that's product. That's inspiring then. Before making this video, I prepared a notes document with all the bugs, shortcomings, and features that I thought this unit was missing. Initially, I planned to go over these areas for improvement in this video, but first I decided to send my findings over to the Nectar team. I was very happy to receive a long response that went over every single note I provided, and for each one I was provided with one of three things. An explanation for why the unit was designed that way, an explanation that the limitations of the device are actually limitations of the software it's trying to control, or that my feedback was well received and would be worked on in the future. For that reason, I decided that instead of going through all these nitpicks, I'll leave it at this. The unit only has so much room for improvement because it has so much potential, not because it's a flawed product. And the Nectar team is clearly working hard to improve this product and is open to taking suggestions from its users. That being said, I still would have loved to see a dedicated piece of software that allowed for deep control of this unit. I've been told that the Nectarine software can do this, but I tried, and it feels clunky and unintuitive even after some updates. A standalone editing platform would have really sealed the deal. Let's talk about the physical aspects of the unit. Keep in mind, this thing sells for $400, so of course it couldn't be made out of the most premium components and materials. That being said, it doesn't feel cheap. It's made out of a nice plastic and it's well put together. The main knobs have a great amount of resistance to them, and the rubber buttons feel good. The screen is good enough for what it has to do. The fader feels pretty good as well, although it doesn't handle slower movements as well as some more premium flying faders. It's also not the quietest. But overall, I think it looks impressive and professional, and it matches my whole black and silver theme perfectly. I love my CS12. I use it pretty much every single day. The use of colored buttons and knobs is genius, having a screen on the unit makes it incredibly powerful, single point automation is revolutionary, and its features go incredibly deep. Its missing features aren't really limitations, they're more like daydreams about how amazing this unit could eventually be. I really hope that Nectar continues to improve this product and that it gets into the hands of more creators. For me, it's well worth the $400 price tag. Nectar, thank you so much for sending out this unit for review, and thank you guys for watching. Before you go, I released a new single, it's called What's Your Hurry. So What's your hurry? Can't you see I'm it's linked over here. Go have a listen.